But let's start by looking in the book that I gave you. So the female part of the plant is the pistil. We're not used to P sounding words being about female genitals, but here it is. I think of her as a pistil pack and mama. <laughs> right. So the pistil is comprised of three structures, starting from the bottom, the ovary, which is the place that, that the fertilized seeds will be. Moving up from the ovary, the style, because she's a pistol pack and mama with style, huh? And right out at the very end is the stigma. And you will have to forgive me, but Catholic uh, childhood uh, leads me to make only one as association with stigma, and that is a bloody hand reaching up, like a stigmata. So that's how I remember stigma. The stigma is like the hand that reaches up to get the pollen. The style connects the stigma to the ovary. The style is solid. It is not a tube. So when pollen lands on the stigma, it has to make enzymes, which are specialized proteins, that carve a way down through the style. And if it's pollen from a different plant, it's not capable of doing that. So the style acts as a guardian. It prevents the wrong pollen from getting down to the ovary. So the male part of the plant is the stay man. Stay man, that's pretty easy. The stay man is the male part, and it has the filament, which is just a little hair like structure, topped by the anther, which is the part that produces the pollen that we're talking about. So the stay men, the male part on top of the filament is the anther that produces the pollen. That pollen has to get to the stigma. When it gets to the stigma and it's the right pollen for that flower, then it can produce enzymes that carve a channel through the style and coming all the way down to the ovary. It then, as in sexual, all sexual reproduction, fuses, the male part fuses with the female part, and thus we can begin to develop the seeds or the fruit or whatever that, the fruit which contains the seeds, whatever that plant is going to do. And there are two primary ways by which plants get the pollen from the stamen to the stigma of the pistil. Wind pollination and uh, insect pollination, which includes anything that moves around. Right. Right? <clears throat> so when a plant is depending on the wind to take the pollen from the anther to the stigma, <clears throat> then it usually produces copious amounts of pollen because it can never be sure which way the wind is blowing. Mm. And these are the plants that tend to kick up allergies in people because they are producing huge amounts of pollen. Down in Texas, they have something called cedar fever, all right, because the cedars are wind pollinated, right? People get hay fever because grasses are wind pollinated, so there's a lot of pollen from them. Um, there's a place that I teach that has so many pine trees that you can sweep up the pine pollen, another wind pollinated plant. Whereas plants that are pollinated by birds, bats, bees, and so on, produce small amounts of rather sticky pollen so that it will stick to their pollinator and then be carried to the next flower. Also, this is a perfect flower, which means that the stamen and the pistil are together in the same flower. This is not always the case. We believe that sexual reproduction in plants began with female plants over here and male plants over there, like with the cedar trees, right? Or the pine trees. There are male pine trees and female pine trees. And the male pine trees make the pollen and it wafts around and then the female pine trees get it and they're the ones that make the pine cones. Right? So we think this is how it started. And then eventually some plants said, you know, this is kind of cumbersome having all the boys over here and all the girls over here. Why don't we bring the boys and the girls together on the same plant? And they did, but they still didn't combine them into one flower. Can you think of any example of a plant that has male flowers and female flowers separate but on the same plant? Well, squash is an excellent one. All of the squashes. This was a female flower, and here's the ovary, right? 
All right, this was a female flower. There's the ovary. These have been fertilized, right? Here's another ex-female flower, all right, that is now, and look, here's a little female flower bud. Can we see it right there? We see the ovary underneath? So the male flower does not have the ovary under it. Female flower bud. Here's a male flower bud. We can see there's no ovary. 